not knowing that they're going to have a mill tomorrow or the next day and where that mill will come from. 575,000 kids at last count in the state of Ohio are food insecure. That's over half a million kids. In Cleveland, Cuyahoga County, that's about 67,000 children that aren't sure where their next meal is going to come from. I am so honored that you guys have picked our charity because we need to do better. We need to do better to make sure our young people have what it takes. Why is it important to ensure that kids get food on a regular basis? We know there's a lot of research that suggests that if you don't eat regularly, not even necessarily healthy, but just eat regularly, there are a lot of diseases that occur later in life. If you don't eat nutritiously, we know that the incidence of diabetes, of heart disease, go up dramatically. It was said earlier by the MC, we know for a fact that kids that don't eat on a regular basis do not do as well in school. A lot of studies at the third grade level have shown and borne out those kids that are eating and getting nutritious food regularly <coughs> do much better. In a previous life, I was a higher education administrator and I always felt that if we really wanted to make an impact and we really wanted to, to break the cycle of poverty, it started with good education. Since I've been with Children's Hunger Alliance, I've learned it goes deeper than that. It's more than basic. We need to make sure the kids get fed regularly because if they don't, they will not do well in school. And if they don't do well in school, they probably won't make it beyond high school. And the stats are out there. We know those that earn a high school diploma, their earning potential is much greater than those that don't finish high school. We know that those go on to some kind of education beyond high school, either apprenticeship, two-year degree, four-year degree, or beyond, do much better. But that doesn't happen if they don't get food and fed on a regular basis. So Children's Hunger Alliance has as a mission, we're a statewide organization, to ensure that the kids without access receive healthy food, nutrition education, and physical activity. And how do we do that? So here in Cuyahoga County, here in Cleveland, we do after school feeding. This past year, we did about 50 sites across the city of Cleveland, including the recreational center at JFK High School and also the Harvard Community Center down the road. We do early childhood. In early childhood, we are involved with in-home daycare providers. We have about 180 in Cleveland. This is where we work with those providers in the neighborhood that are taking care of about six to eight young children we want sure that they can feed their, their kids in their care two meals and a snack each day at no cost to them. So now it's always it helping ensure that kids are eating, but it's helping that local business owner because they don't have to worry about food expenses. They need to put that money back in their pocket or put it back into enhancing their in-home daycare uh, operation. We also do, so we do about 180 of those. We do early childhood daycare centers. We do 10 here in Cleveland, about 25 statewide. We're also involved in school feeding. In school feeding, where we really have an interest is with breakfast. Kids that qualify for free and reduced breakfast and lunch, in most districts, the, the rate of those that participate in lunch is phenomenal. It's 70, 80, 90%. Breakfast drops well under 30%. So we work with school districts, we work with Cleveland schools, we work with Garfield Heights to ensure that kids take advantage, those that qualify for a free and reduced breakfast. And we've actually are doing, we're pushing statewide, trying to get those high need areas to do at least what we call breakfast after the, the bell. So starting their day off by not having any kind of class or lecture, but eat, eating as a class. And it's just phenomenal to see districts that are doing that. We also do summer feeding. Summer feeding here locally, we partnered with the Greater Cleveland Food Bank and some other organizations and did about 180 summer sites to ensure that, that once the school year ended, kids at least got a lunch, if not a breakfast and lunch. And then we also do education. So wherever we're providing our services, we do age-specific curriculum on nutrition, the value of eating healthy, and also physical activity. And then the final area where we're involved is advocacy work. We work with, with our local and state legislators to pass policies and laws that will ensure the kids that need it are getting it. 
I know in talking with the, the goal was to try to raise at least $1,000. Here's where that's important. Every dollar we raise, we leverage that to provide at least three mills. So put it in perspective. I mentioned the recreational center at JFK that we sponsor after school feeding. Last year, we had about 15 kids daily participated in that after school program. That amounted to, I think, 2,700 mills served for that entire year. If you guys raise $1,000, that would take care of the administrative costs of operating that program for another academic year. What we do is not big. You know, we, we have 15 to 20, maybe 30 kids at a site. But I like to think we go where the kids need it. And if it's only five kids, that's five kids that are getting fed that wouldn't otherwise. Cannot thank you again enough for choosing Children's Hunger Alliance as your charitable cause that you want to support this year. It is so exciting when you go to a site and you see the smiles on the young kids' faces because they're getting fed. When I see a kid three years of age light up because he's eating or she's eating cauliflower or broccoli and they're excited. I don't know about you, but my kids had to acquire a taste for rock and I don't think they ever were excited until they got to be about adults. <laughs> so again, thank you so much. It's greatly needed, but it's ensuring that those that need it are getting a leg up so they can have a successful career and they can make it to their 40th reunion and beyond. Thank you again. Try to be respectful and use the name that you're asking me to use. I'd like to introduce Miss McKinney, Miss Catherine McKinney Shepherd. Miss McKinney was asked to be by the principal, Mr. Zupan, <laughs> to sponsor the senior class. Miss McKinney asked Mrs. Wings to assist her, and they became known as the dynamic duo. And yes, they were. Mrs. McKinney now uses her maiden name as Shepherd. Ms. Shepard is one of the original teachers who began teaching biology at Kennedy when the doors opened in 1965, some few years ago. She is thankful for, for Mr. Leon Pryor, Brenda Brown, our president's father-in-law, who fought to keep her at JFK when she was on the list of teachers to be transferred to another school. So she is privileged to remain at Kennedy until she retired in 1995. While at Kennedy, Ms. McKinney, was advisor to the Youth Council on Human Relations, chaperoning Youth Council students from the Greater Cleveland to Washington, D.C. for four years, horseback riding club, didn't know we had that, <laughs> karate club, student congress, and our wonderful 1978 class. She founded and directs the George E. Mills Gallery of Excellence, known in other schools as the Hall of Fame. She is a charter member of the Roy L. Kidd Memorial Scholarship Fund Committee. I think we know who Mr. Kidd is. The committee honors Coach Kidd by giving scholarships in his name. We asked her just to say hello, but she wants to share more information with us about JFK and the community. Can we all give a round of applause for Ms. McKinney? you know me. 
I'm glad to be alive. Amen. 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 So we're all blessed to be here tonight to look at each other and say it's so good to see you again. Yes. Yes. So I say to the class of 1978, good evening. Good evening. It's my privilege and my honor to be with you. It was 40 years ago that you graduated from one of the best high schools in the United States. Yes. Amen. the third best high school in the state of Ohio. All right. Today, our reputation is tarnished. It's my belief that in order to keep a neighborhood and a community strong, you must keep the history alive. All right. And so today, I want to briefly share a few things with you about the Kennedy alumni and the Kennedy faculty. And I want to share this with you because this summer, John F. Kennedy alumni and community <coughs> made history that is very not known very well. On Saturday, August 5th, there was a tour of the Mount Pleasant, Lisa Bill, Lee Harvard, and Miles Heights area. The tour was advertised in the Plain Dealer for $30 to $40 per person. The tour took people around to see the homes in the Lee Seville area and indicated that the homes that were built in that area were not like homes that were built in other areas of Cleveland, but homes that you might see in the suburbs. <clears throat> Some of these homes were the homes that your parents lived in, where your grandparents lived in, and you are the products of those homes. Just recently, there was a street near I-480 off the road that was designated as a historic area. So a lot of research has been done on the area about intelligent and intelligent black people and talented black people that built a very unique community. And this research has been published in a book this spring and the title of this book is Surrogate Suburbs. I'm sorry, I have a hard time speaking. Surrogate Suburbs, Black Upward Mobility and Neighborhood Change in Cleveland, 1900 to 1980, written by Todd Mishney. In this book, you'll find John F. Kennedy, you'll find Mr. Mills, and you'll probably find some other people that you know that live in the community. I've spoken to the author of the book, Mr. Mishmi. I've spoken to Kathleen Crowder, who is uh, with the Cleveland Restoration Society, and they are considering, they have not determined yet, but they are considering offering this tour every year. I'd like to take a few moments to tell you something about your teachers at John F. Kennedy that you might not know. That's a little bit unique. Did you know that we had a principal by the name of Dr. Livestein Carter, who was an acting superintendent of the Cleveland Public Schools for a short time? Did you know that Mrs. McBath, math department chair, is the cousin to Colin Powell? Did you know that Mr., oh, you probably know this one, that Mr. Caleb, the phys ed teacher, played for the Cleveland Browns? Or that Unikina became a judge in East Cleveland. Or that Mr. Rice, an industrial arts teacher, became the mayor of Woodmere. And he just happened to be the uncle of Condoleezza Rice. Now, Miss Barbara Williams, the home economics department chair, gave her students a raw egg to care for it like it was a baby. You are a witness to this. And it has been well documented that this JFK homework assignment was copied and became a nationwide theme in sitcoms using eggs or sex of flowers or crying dolls to help educate and discourage teens from becoming parents at an early age. Thank you. Now I want to share 
just a few things, just a few things about the achievements of the JFK alumni. On July 20th, I was privileged to be invited to and witness the proclamation of a new acquisition to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It was the acquisition of the suits worn in the movie, The Sax Man, by a singing group that got its start at JFK by the name of Sly, Sleep, and Wicked. <laughs> The original three Sly, Slick, and Wicked alumni appeared on Soul Train, but only two of them are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and that would be Charles Steele and uh, John Wilson. They are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for the second time with artifacts, not once, but twice. In attendance that day also was Kenny Brown. Kenny was the bass player and the band leader for Gladys Knight and the Pips oh. for years. If you want more information about the sax man and John Wilson, just Google the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and type in John Sly Wilson. Now when I found it, the George E. Mills Gallery of Excellence, I did it because John used to call all the time, and he would talk for at least an hour, on many occasions, telling me about all the achievements of the John F. Kennedy graduates. And I'm skipping some of the things that I have written to make this a little bit brief, but I want to tell you about Jean Shelton, who was in charge of publicity for Warner Brothers. Jean compiled the Diana Ross's Farewell album, and Jean was also the first <coughs> talk show host. He had the first talk show on television in the United States. Joyce Anderson started as Lockwood Hairstyle, and he designed outfits for the Commodores. Felix Giles was a Baja racer. Dr. Head was president of two colleges. Colleagues smiled to see on television all the time as an activist. We had a young man by the name of John McCoy who marched in the Rose Bowl parade. And years later, we had a young lady by the name of Yvonne Horn who was on a team that decorated the floats for that parade. Don Pearson, nicknamed the Black Beethoven, has produced numerous TV commercials for companies such as McDonald's, Kellogg's, and Wendy's, not to mention all of the numerous movies that he has scored, among other things. Did you know that Julio Iglesias was discovered and is still managed by Shirley Brooks? We have an attorney who is currently representing a head of state in a foreign country. Roosevelt Lethwich is on Channel 8 as a news reporter. Dr. Terrence Menifee is the current principal of John Adams. Hmm. Dr. Theo Robinson is one of the principals at John F. Kennedy. Of course, you know, we have Greg Evans, your keynote speaker. And we have Rosalind House Story, who has traveled to Europe with the Heritage Choir and they have performed there. We have one alum that was the chauffeur for George H. W. Bush before he became President of the United States. And there are so many others <coughs> that I don't have time to tell you about. Now what is unique about John F. Kennedy? Many, many things. But one of the things is that JFK was the first <coughs> Cleveland public school to have a TV station. Mr. Winters took his students to interview NBC Hammer at the beginning of Hammer's career. And Roots Alex Haley came to JFK and was interviewed in that TV studio. Now on August 6th of this summer, I received this book. This book is from J.J. Johnson, class of 1968. It's titled Air Check, Life in Music Radio. J.J. speaks warmly of his days at JFK of Mr. Winters in the radio room and Miss Blaha as the drama teacher. 
JJ, I refer to him as the DJ Voice of America for decades. And this autobiography is going to be placed in the Library of Congress. And finally, there's another <coughs> graduate from Kennedy by the name of Mercedes Farmer. Tomorrow she has a book signing at Barnes and Noble out at Eden Place between one and four. And her book of poetry is titled Mending a Broken Heart. And don't let the title fool you, it's quite deep. We were the state of an arts comprehensive high school. We've gone from a high school that housed more than 3,000 students to a high school that holds houses two schools with a total of approximately 500 students. Our Harvard School is going to be torn down soon and rebuilt over at Elliott Field. Many of the alumni that I have mentioned have already been inducted into the George and Mills Gallery of Excellence. Arsenio Hall is on the list of future inductees. Now, if you know anyone that needs to be recommended for the gallery or what others call the Hall of Fame, please see me or please see me. Minister Mary Watson. Adam. Both Affinity Missionary Baptist Church and Lero Baptist Church have adopted John F. Kennedy. And as you know, Mary is an associate minister at Affinity. Coach Kidd was your keynote speaker at your last reunion. Mrs. Thompson, who's sitting over here, and I are members of the Roy L. Kidd Memorial Scholarship Fund Committee. If you want to join this committee because we need some young blood, or if you want to donate some funds, or if you want to donate some services, again, please see Mrs. Thompson or see myself. In closing, I say to you old timers, who remember the adventures of traveling to another galaxy, you'll understand that in a minute. I say live long and prosper. <laughs> to the future where black minds are not wasted, I say to you, what time are you ever? <laughs>
Greg holds a Bachelor's of Science in Marketing from Dyke College in Cleveland, Ohio, and a Master's degree at College Student Service Administration from Oregon State University in Corvallis, Oregon. And I don't know if I said that correctly. Corvallis. Corvallis, Oregon. Greg is the president and CEO of the Greg Evans Group of Consultants. He has been an adjunct facility faculty member at Northwest Christian University. Greg has also taught leadership classes at Willoughby High School and Bethel School District. He is a past president of the Oregon slash Washington State Conference of the National Association of Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, and past vice president of both the Na National and Western Region Councils of Black American Affairs and American Association of Community Colleges. Please give a round of applause to welcome our classmate, Greg Evans. still vertically challenged. I have not grown an inch in 40 years. So I have to make sure that I get the mic right as I'm coming into the mic and I'm speaking to you. I, I am so deeply honored that you have asked me to address you this evening. Um, this indeed is one of the highlights of my life. One of the real pleasures of my life. I want to say a couple of things in opening um, my remarks. First of all, many of you know that I am a city councilor in the city of Eugene, Oregon. I've been there for five years, been president of the council, been president of the transit board, a number of other things that I've done over the years. But, you know, Oregon has legalized marijuana. <laughs> and I want you to know tonight, if you remember back years ago, that I've been accused of having too much fun and indulging in adult beverages before I was an adult, that I had absolutely, positively, nothing to do with the legalization of weed. <laughs> Washington, California, Alaska, and Colorado. Don't get me in trouble with my boss tonight. Don't get me in trouble with my boss tonight. We had two monumental uh, figures in our um, country and in the world leave us this past week. Aretha Franklin passed away. Some of you may have seen her um, homegoing services on TV this afternoon. Um, beautiful affair. You know, it was church up in there, and it was a performance. A whole lot of performances. But also, we lost a great American and a great leader and a man that I had the pleasure of meeting, Senator John McCain. One of the classiest people that I have ever met. He was the perfect opponent to lose to Barack Obama <laughs> because he was a classy dude. He didn't take it into the gutter. Nope. He didn't go out when people said to him, we don't trust this man, he's an Arab. And he picked that microphone up and said, no ma'am, you can trust this man to be your president. And I have to tell you this story because, you know, when McCain passed away, he had, before he passed away, he insisted that Barack Obama, George Bush, all the former presidents be able to speak and be invited to his homegoing services, which they have today. And in that, he made it clear that he did not want President Trump there. Yeah. 
Yes. You know? Yes, he did. But when he got to heaven, and this is not getting this on good authority, okay? <laughs> when he got to heaven, Aretha and Jesus were waiting for him. Yeah. <laughs> and we got up there, John McCain said to Jesus, you know, Jesus, Aretha, I'm so sorry. I should have been classier. I should have invited Trump to say something at my home going services. And Jesus looked at him and said, he isn't invited here either. <laughs> I'm a Democrat, but I do hang out with Republicans sometimes. I've been known to drink something with a Republican or two. That was great. I, will, I, I want to say this. Um, the thing tonight is still standing on solid ground. Yes. And as Eagles, as graduates of one of the best high schools, as Ms. McKinney said, in the state of Ohio, and definitely in the city of Cleveland. We have a legacy that we need to honor and to cherish. I strongly encourage you, let's support our school. Let's support our school. But looking at that theme, I've been looking at some other things too that we may not really recognize when we start looking at it. The great Dizzy Gillespie was once asked to describe the talent of Ella Fitzgerald by a reporter. And you know what he said? You can't see that far. That describes my classmates. Nobody could see how far we would go. That's right. Even our parents. We are part of, we are the Obama generation. What was once thought impossible to elect a black president of the United States of America came to fruition in our lifetime. Yes. We were born of parents and grandparents who suffered through segregation, many of whom escaped the South, like my folks did, from South Carolina and Virginia and West Virginia to come up to Cleveland for a better life. A better life is for us. So while we have one foot in segregation, we have the other foot in the civil rights era, and now what is being termed as the post-civil rights era. This is never post-civil rights, folks. We still fight. Yes, yes. I fight these people on my job every day. I fight these people in the halls of Congress and in the State House of Oregon and in the City Council Chamber in Eugene. I recently, two people who were giants in our community one African-American and one Latina passed away within a month of each other. And it took me 15 months to rename a community center and a park after those two individuals. And as I was going through that, as people showed their real colors, you know the people who were opposing me making that move were our progressive democratic sisters. You know? When, when push comes to shove and the money's on the table, some people ain't ready to step up and support their own rhetoric. That's why we still have to be vigilant and we still have to be sharp. And we have to be on top of this. We have to stand on solid ground. We have no other choice. Most of you in this room have gone on to do fantastic things with your lives 
and your careers and your families, our families. Besides the fact that I do two jobs, I also have five children, a wife, an ex-wife, and two cats. <laughs> My youngest son just graduated from graduate school in Northern Arizona with a master's degree in linguistics. And now he's teaching English as a second language in China. One of my other sons, he um, is in the Air Force. And he's a crew chief on a helicopter crew in Okinawa just came back from Afghanistan. My other, one of my other sons is a software engineer in Atlanta. And then there is my other son. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all turn your phones off, because I'm going to see this on Facebook. Because <laughs> right? if I go back home and I, sit, I tell you this story, my wife's gonna get her foot off in my behind. But I don't say it anyway, okay? The boy got issues. I don't exactly like him. My wife and I don't like his choice of girlfriends. Right now, he's going out with an exotic dancer. Jesus, please. It never ends when you're a parent. He's 31. You know? And her, and her ex-husband had bought her some Tupperware appliances for her body. Oh, and <laughs> Too much. She wants my son to do the upkeep. <laughs> but, you know, I'm just... <laughs> it ain't easy being a daddy or a mother. You all know that. Yeah. It's a lot easier being a grandparent because you get to give them back. Right, right, right. You know, you, know, you don't have to feed them. That's what maybe you do. You take that back. It's, you know, some of our kids get recycled and recycled again. They come through the house. Be like. When you gonna leave? <laughs> what time you gonna leave? Don't come back. You can come back for 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 Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner, but you ain't coming to stay here. Not no more. You on your own. You're grown. You know. I'm gonna veer off of my prepared remarks and take a moment of personal privilege. My parents are both gone. My father died when I was four. My mother raised me as a single mother. And she was tough as hell. Was I a good son all the time? No. Yeah, you are. Don't, don't, don't get in front of me on that. Yeah, that's what I mean. No. You weren't exactly the best son in the world. You know? You know what she was doing behind your mama's back when she went to work? And we was all in your house doing things we weren't supposed to do. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those are some good times, though. Some really, really good times. And I don't know how the hell we lived through it, but we did. Not a great yeah, Jesus, guy. Was, Jesus was looking out for us. He was what we yes, wanted. Yes, yes. professionals, you become lawyers, doctors, administrators, teachers, caregivers for your parents and your family. No matter what you're doing, you're doing it well. You're doing it great. You're doing it the JFK way. It doesn't matter. What matters is, is that we are together. And when people ask me, they say, do you have any family left in Cleveland? And I, had to pause, I used to pause and say, you know, I don't. I don't have any blood relatives here left. 
But when somebody asked me that a few days ago before I came back, it was a colleague of mine that said, are you going home? I said, yes. You got any family left? I said, yes. I got a whole class yeah. of John F. Kennedy. There is not a day that goes by in my life that I don't think about at least one of you, some of you. Yes, that's true, Janice. <laughs> so I tell them the story when you called me up and left me a message on my, 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 my office phone and it started out MF. Was from was from the English department, and she studied African American language patterns. It's a white girl now, okay? This is a white girl, and when she heard that on the phone, she said, "She said that's amazing." She is so scatologically correct. I used MFSOB and some other stuff I ain't never heard of. <laughs> but no, she wasn't cussing me out. She was cussing somebody out in traffic and she was uh, she didn't realize that she was calling my job. <laughs> uh, and John Jackson, you kept me up all last night. <laughs> And, you know, I have promised to get you back in the witness protection program. <laughs> <laughs> as as this weekend is over. <laughs> but we are the products of our parents. We're the products of our teachers. We're the products of our brothers and sisters, our extended families. We are eagles. And we are great. So from that, that platform of standing on a solid ground, we fly high, we fly long, we fly strong. And ladies and gentlemen, let us all fly forever. Amen. Thank you. Good. And I 